Good morning, Rabbi Sai. Ah, Lilu Nishma Simi Mirosus Mordechai. Dear Belly, long time listener, first time emailer. First off, Mazel Tov on the birthday of Granddad Tzvi Rus. We should bring much nachas to the entire family. Amen. I realize this rendition of Good Morning Rabbi is likely the one thousand five hundredth time you've seen the opening line, which is often imitated. Listen to this, Rabbi Sai. It is often imitated, but never duplicated. But this has a little different twist. I've been down in Miami on vacation. And they would hear me listen to the daf. And of course, they were hooked. However, I'm happy to say that now my son-in-law, who heard, heard him listening to the daf, Jeremy Sykes, was also inspired. And he's now joining the daf, beginning with Bob Metzia. Free Gemara is already on the way. Okay, so we got a guy. Thank you for all that you do. Your dedication for teaching Torah and preparing is inspirational. You still find time to do some wild and crazy things. Perhaps I'll see you in Chicago soon. Your Talmud since Brochus 2005. Raboy Sai Brochus 2005 at the Adas. But with an 18 year hiatus until 2023, beginning with Saita, Koltov, Yechiel, Gordon. Unbelievable. He's from the ones that remember that Shir at the Adas. Here we go. Let me get some volume. Okay. Ra 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 boy say. Pleasure meeting Rabbi Na. The Oilam is selling books here and Svarim. These two guys over here. Where's Nachman? Where's Rib Nachman? Anybody? He's in America. Pleasure meeting Rabbi Nachman Seltzer at his book signing. Seeing him every day sitting next to their belly. I felt like I was seeing a friend. Yosef Levin Brown, MDY since Nadarim Daf Yud. And um, Yoshi did this for me. He, I, he didn't know I was going to show it this year. He gave me a little gift last night. But I think it's good. Basically, this is the Ganav's van. Did you get your free Gemara? It says, Karen, America's Daf Yoimi. He even has sits is hanging out of the door. America's Daf Yoimi shop over there. Okay. So Rabbi Isai, I don't know, does anybody want to volunteer to show me how to do status? Anybody? You, you want to show? Okay. We got to... Yes. Ashi, get over here. I do what I got to do. Anything for some Tyra. Ashi, you ever did this? Yes, I've done status updates on... Uh, what is this, a Facebook or... Um... No, so, no, no, this is WhatsApp status. You know how to do that? Yes, 100%. So, uh, I, I'm over here on my status. Yeah. yeah, what do I do? All right, so go to, go to, like, go to over here. Should I this click the plus, plus button? The plus button, yeah. Plus button. Okay. Um, now you go to your... Um, this video I just showed. Yes, yeah, so you just click that. I just click that. And then click... Then I click, the, I click this button right over here. And yeah. it goes to my status? Yes, sir. <laughs> Ah, oh, Yvaldic. It it's on my status already? It should be. With it's moment. sending, it's sending. Um, it should be momentary. How do you stick that thing on the bottom that says join the Fiona account with the link? Like, uh, how do you do uh, that? Oh, you can, uh, when, when oh, you're you can, right over here. Yeah, you can edit it. You yeah. Can, you can just write right there. Yeah. You can just, click, just write join the Fiona. Join the Well, the Fiona. Uh, com. Uh, com. Uh, that's, that's also another stuff. Yeah, no, but what, what if I want to do join that on the picture that, I sh- that I'm showing? Wait, it, you Can't do that. Everybody does that. Ask me. And then what I push now? Yeah, you push that. You push it. I'm scared. Yeah. Oh, it's a. Co- oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, how how did you get another? I got oh, it. you could delete that? Yeah, I could delete that. Mm. You just deleted my status. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, let me just go back here. Yeah. Right, let me see. You added a word to it? How? Just by touching my screen. You see, I totally am scared. <laughs> All right, we gotta do a we gotta do a daft today. Yes, sir. Let's right. get. I want to get started. So. Um, you want to get started with what? The daft. Oh, you want you also want to get started with the daft? Okay, so let's get started. Yes, sir. You want to sit next to me over here? Shkoyah Rashi, pro. Let me see how many people. Nobody's watching this. Nobody saw my status yet. Not yet. They will. Oh, yeah? They will. Okay, fine. Yvaldi, Yishkoya. 
Mati Belsky is watching live. Givaldik. Mati Belsky. Put it on your status, Mati. <laughs> now, if you get something like that on status, could you forward it on, the, on your status or no? How? How do you save status? There's a status saver? There is a way. Okay. Yo. The Mesechta is sponsored for the unity of Am Yisrael. Paras HaChodesh Lili Nishma Zechari Ben Moshe Lili Nishma Zechayo Bas Yosef Doilem is on Zoom. And we do have the daily wave here. Laibi and his father do the daily wave. Paras HaChodesh, Aaron Freeman, how's your brother doing? Starting. Tfilas. Aaron Freeman, it should be a schuz to rebellion if it continues to see at the teaching Torah to Klai Yisrael. Amen. Thank you. Paras HaChodesh, Mazel Tov. To Aaron, Reveli, the entire Mishpacha, on the birth of Sophia Rus. We have a, a tzaddik here that's sitting here right behind Noam from Lakewood, who donated money yesterday. I have to, oh. Moshe Yeshua ben Rivka Frazel Zivuk Hogan Bekorov. Shkoyach. Huh? Another hundred dollars? You know, take the, we'll take the money. It should be a schus for your uncle. That what? What about your uncle? A, a Zivig. What's his name? Ben Sura Pesel Peril. Sura Pesel Peril. Peril, yeah. Uh, I'll take that money, please. <laughs> Can I have two uh, Agodas, please? Shkoyach. <laughs> Beautiful. She finds Zivugim Bekarov. The Parnas has Shavua, Zachos for my daughters, SB Bas SR and EM Bas SR, to find Shiduchim Bekarov. Amen. Parnas Ayoim Shprinzi and Avrumi grows in honor of the engagement of our daughter, Big Mazel Tov. To Chana, to Pini Levine, son of Yossi and Malki Levine of Flappos. The Shidduch should be Oile Yoffe. He's just here. Was he? Anonymous for the schos, for an easy childbirth, for his daughter and a healthy baby. Rabbi Yisai, it's, uh, I have a goal. And I think it's a very achievable goal. I just need everybody's help. We, we need to bring another thousand people to the share for Bob Matzi. It's very, very doable. We're not going to have another opportunity like this in a, for a while. You have Bob Basra. It's beautiful, but it's not Bob Matzi. Sanhedrin. Maybe Abu Zara. Maybe Marcus, a little, not nah, a thousand people. I think we can do it. But we got, we got to, each person, just bring one person. Each person, bring a person, we'll get it. A little status. So they showed me last night. Shapsei Cohen, who puts on his status all the time. He put a, a guy he joined yesterday. You don't know. So what if you put it on your status a week ago? Do it again. You never know. Somebody will watch, be inspired, and join. Um, you know that uh, the Hasidish one, the, the one that guy spoke in Yiddish was very popular. It went like a lot mm -hmm. of people, people not from the Shiro, are very excited about it. So put that on your status. Even if no, no, no one you know speaks Yiddish, put it on your status. People might join. You never know. Rabbi said we're holding like seven lines from the bottom of Kuf Yud, Omid Beis. We're talking about somebody that stole money from a ger. Stole money from a ger, and now he wants to do tshuva. So he goes and he brings the money to the Beis Hamid, he brings it to the Kohanim, and he has to bring a Choymesh, he has to bring a Karba. Then the Mishnah tells us, what if he was able to give the money part? There's two components, right? There's the money and the Karba. What if he's able to give the money, and he dies before he's able to give the Karba? So he doesn't really have a Kapara, and the children come and they demand the money back from the Kohanim. Look, our father wasn't able to complete the whole process. He wasn't able to bring a carbon. We want our money back. Says the Mishnah, too late. Once you gave the money. So Abayu wants to prove from here an amazing, amazing Chiddush. You see from here that he did achieve, let's say, a 50% kapara. Because if there was a zero kapara, then in the halachas of money, if somebody makes such a mistake, it would be like a Mekah Taos. He would have never given the Kayaharim the money had he known that he would drop dead. So therefore, give the money back. 
The Gemara has a big issue with it. What about other situations? From here you see that the money at least achieved a 50% goal. Kapara. The Eloyme Kaper, because if not, have Amino Mahadr Liyarshim. Where's the Rosh Kailo today? I need him. Morty, Morty. Ah, I hope he's watching. I have a shtickle. Yesterday he was talking in the middle of Shir and he said something. He came over to me after Shir, but I have a little riot to me. I wanted, wanted to discuss it with him. Okay. Listen to this chiddush. It should go back to the yarshim. We know a person's mind. The person would not give money. Listen to this. It's his money. It's his money. So why is he giving it to the kohanim? Because he wants to achieve a kapara. And if he doesn't get the kapara, he would have never given it. He would never put in that pushkabak had he not known that he would get zero out of it. It's his. Halakhically, it says why? Because when the Yerush dies, it's Hefker, etc. He's Zeichen. Elamato asked the Gemara, okay, let's see if this stands with logic. Why? As we learned yesterday, Chatos Shemesu Ba'aleha Tepok Lechulin Dadaita Dachilo Yafrisha. A person sets aside a Chatos and then he dies. So we said you have to put the Chatos into a kippa into a place and not feed it and unfortunately a matzeva grows there it dies why I, the person would have never set aside this chatos had he known that he would die before he's able to bring it if you're able to make such lo- logical conclusions do it everywhere do it with chatos as well amri you're right it's a good svara but guess what halacha lomishim sinai beats logic you're right, logically speaking, it shouldn't die. Why? Because like a Mecca a Tawah sort of, take it out of being a Chathas. It was never a Chathas to begin with. But the Halach Lamesh Mishinai, Mesh Rabbeinu learned on Har Sinai, this is how it is, that's it. We don't ask questions. As we had this Asham, we spoke about it yesterday as well. Asham, the same exact case, that the owner died before he was able to bring it as a kapara, over here you don't have a lochel moshim yisina lochayra. Says Gemara, Hashem na mi yechus gimir la kol shevachatas meisa ba Hashem roya. That was the side we had yesterday. If you take the same exact thing by a chatas, by a chatas it dies. So a Hashem is one step less. It doesn't die. You let it graze, and you wait until it gets a mum. Once it gets a mum, you sell it. The money is kadosh. What do you do with the money? You buy. An oila, and that's it. But why? Let it. The, the, the question is, let it undo itself because I never intended to donate it in such a way. The answer is because it's just like a chatas, and a chatas we said is halach uh, lamishim sinai. So too Hashem. Elo meato. How about Yavama? How about can we do this logic with a marriage? Yavama Chanafalifne Mukashrin. Yavama, a woman who was married and her husband dies without children. The Allah is that she falls, she gets married to the brother-in-law. Now, what if the brother-in-law is a disgusting guy? He looks terrible, he is terrible. He's a Mukashrin, he has leprosy. So you're gonna say, Tebikulay Khalitza, she should go out without even Khalitza, without even removing the guy's shoe and spitting that She never decided to get engaged in such a way. Taisa says we're talking about engagement, not a marriage, because a marriage, you wouldn't do this far because you be Laznus. So you going to, to we're talking about Erusin only. Okay? So as Taisa is based on this. Perhaps you should say, anytime you purchase anything, you, you buy a car. You buy a car, you drive it for two years, and all of a sudden you hit a brick wall. Had I known that I would hit a brick wall with this car, I would have never b- bought it. I would have ridden my bicycle. Had I known that my husband would die and I would fall to his Mukeshkin brother, I wouldn't have got engaged to him. Okay, so had I known that I would have been involved in an accident, Retroactively, I wouldn't have done the whole sale. Well, I want to spend three weeks in the hospital. No, I don't. So therefore, the, the car was never mine. What's the difference? Oh, so it says Taisvis that 
when it comes to sale, there's somebody else involved there. There's the moicher. He doesn't agree with this logic. But when it comes to this marriage, it's very possible that the husband doesn't care right now. The husband doesn't care. You hear Mendy? What's the difference? Mendy. What's the difference between a sale and a... Yeah, but uh, so you have a, you have a husband, a, a cousin and a kala. It's two people also. The answer is, he would be masculine. He's dead right now. He doesn't care. Yeah, he's dead. All right. So says the Gemara, Hossam, even by a woman who falls, Tomu Kishchin, Hossam and Ansa Hadi, this is the famous, we are Adam, we know what a woman wants. That perhaps she would want this marriage. Why? The Menach Nicha Lo Bekolduhu, She'd be, she would be agreeable even to be married to this guy. A woman is better for her to, to be married and, and to compromise than to be alone for the rest of her life. A father wakes up his daughter the day before the chasana and says, wake up, wake up. This is the best day of your life. So the girl looks at her and she says, you're confused. I'm getting married tomorrow. Just, yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. Today is your best day of your life. <laughs> Says in the Mishnah, we have the... What? Yehoyariv and Yedaya. These are the two first Mishmaris that can work with all the Mishmaris, but they go in order. Yehoyariv is first, Yedaya is second. Tarabana. Oh, we actually have a little bit. Why not? He gives the Asham to Yehoyariv, which is in the wrong order. He should really give the money first and then the Asham second. So it says the Gemara, So you do this, you take the money and you bring it over here. Eitzel Asham. Divrei Rebbe Yehuda. Now, the question is going to be on Rabbi Yehuda, not Chacham. But Chacham, my room, Yachzer Asham, Eitzel Kesev, Chacham say that if this is what happened, you take the Asham and you give it to your Dayo. Hey, Chidami. Now, something's wrong over here. If he gave the Asham to Yayarev when Yayarev was in the base Hamigdosh, the Kesev Li Yadayo, the Mishmarti the Yadayo. And he gave the money to Yedaya when Yedaya, the, ne- the following week, Why would Rabbi Yehuda say that Yedaya has to give the money to Yarev? Yarev was wrong over here. They accepted the, the, the animal before they received the money. They should have looked into it. At the end of the day, it doesn't make sense for Yedaya to give the money to Yarev. Omer Rav, Achim Ha'eskino, the Yarev, Asham Le'Yarev, B'mishmarti the Yarev, Yes, that happened. The animal was received first, but in the right mishmar for the right people. What happened was the money went to the wrong mishmar. The money went to, to the second, to Yedaya, but it wasn't their turn yet. It was still Yahyarev's turn. They, he should have given the money to Yahyarev, to the first mishmar. Review this. So we have a machlaik. So what's machlaik? What's the svaro here? Maybe the Sovak even the law, the Lab Mishmeris, the Yedaya, he die continually. So, what you see from the Gemara here is we're talking about a Kanas. There's a penalty going on here. Who receives the penalty? Does the first Mishmer get the penalty or the second Mishmer? They both did something wrong. Who, who's more in the wrong? Review the Sovak even the Lab Mishmeris, the Yedaya, he die continually. They received the money. And it's not, they're not even here. They're not even supposed to be around. Who are they? It's not their week. It's Yahyarev's week right now. Why are they taking money? Not in the right place. Hilkoch, Yahzer, Kesav, Makes a lot of sense. You're not in the Beis HaMikdash now. Why are you taking funds that don't belong to you? Give it to the per- to people that are in the Beis HaMikdash. Rabban and Savri, but Rabban have a very strong Sfari here. Shaloi Kedinu Avod Bnei Yahyarev. The Kiblu Oshem Kamei Kesav. Yes, they, Yedai took money and it wasn't their turn. But Yahyarev is taking an animal at a place. They have more responsibility. They're in the base Hamigdash. When somebody shows up and says, I want to get a kapara for Gezel Hager. So somebody has to ask him, wait a minute. 
Did you follow the procedure? Did you do the checklist? There's a checklist. First comes money, then comes carbon. What are you taking your carbon from somebody that, that says he, he's a guest of Where's the money? Ask him, set him straight. You're the Kayan. You're the Kayan in the base Amigdas. You should know the rules. And because you messed up, we're going to give you the Kanas. You get penalized. They did it wrong. We give them the Kanas, and therefore the animal goes. Yes, to the wrong, it's the wrong mishmar, but the animal goes, we wait one week, a few days, and let you die and take care of the, the money and the carbon. Wow is right, and it's, they're the majority, they're the Rabbanon. They, this is how the Rabbanon hold. Tanya Omar Rebbe. Now, very interesting. Rebbe, who came after Rebbe Yehuda, he authored the Mishnah, right, one of the last Tanaim. He says a few chidushim here. He says things that seem to either contradict or are simple, mm-hmm. But there's something deeper going on. Omar Rabbi, the Divri Rabbi Yehuda, according to Rabbi Yehuda, if they didn't wait for any of the money to come in, so the owner must bring another Ashom. He didn't achieve his kapara. Let B'nai Yedayah, who have the money now, let them do that kravas karba. Yet, the first mishmar, they get to keep the first carbon that they messed up on. Amri asked the Gemara, my chazi, what's a messed up carbon worth? There's nothing, there's no value. You can't eat it, you can't put it on the mizbech, nothing. Ashim Pasalu, oh my Rav you're right, there's very little, but at least the hides. They get to keep the hides. Okay, Tanya Omer Rebbe, another Chiddush says Rebbe, Div Rebbe Huda. If the asham is alive and well, nobody ever did a shechita, the kohanim were aware that something's wrong. They didn't put it on the mizbech. Why? Because where's the money? Let's wait around for the money. Okay. So they didn't do shechita. Take the animal, give it to the next mishmar. Let them do the shechita. They have the money. Wait a minute. Says the Gemara. That doesn't go. That's basically what's on this. On this chart right over here, that you take the animal and you give it to the money, you give it to Yedaya. But Rabbi Yudha is the opposite. Rabbi Yudha says money. that the money goes to the to the carbon. Rabbi is just talking in Rabbi Yehuda. The divrei Rabbi Yehuda. What you do is you take the animal and you give it to Yedaya. No, Rabbi Yudha is the one that said you take the money and you give it to Yara. Rabbi Yudha Yaksu Kesev Eitz Lashem Islam. How can I ask you to go to Nafik Mishmarti the Yara Velay Tavu? Says the Gemara, Rebbe is talking about a special Chiddush. Ya Yarev is done. Finished. They're out of here. This might be it. I'm not 100% uh, sure what. Oh. It's not the Mishmar. Huh? I don't know what's going on. Oh. That's why. Okay. Something. Whatever. You get the idea. Ya Yarev is out of here. Yidaya, the, the second Mishmar, is in place in the base Amigdosh. And Yayarov never asked for the money. The reason why the money goes to the second Mishmar is because the first Mishmar never asked for it. They were Michalit. So the Asham stays by Yedaya. The, the goats from Yayarov to Yedaya, the money's already there. Great. Tanya Yidoch, Omar Rebbe, another Chiddush. The Divi Rebbe Yudo, Mkayim Asham. Yachzer Kesef Eitzel Hashem. So, let's go back. Does that fit into what we learned? L'divrei. Rabbi Yehuda, im kayim Hashem. If there's a carbon around, Yachzer Kesef Eitzel Hashem. According to Rabbi Yehuda, you take the one and you give it to the two. You have the money and the thing. That's the Gemara Pshita. Hachi is like, that's exactly what Rabbi Yehuda said. You're just repeating over Rabbi Yehuda's words. Oh, obviously Rebbe knows exactly what Rebbe Yudha said and he's not repeating anything. He's saying a chiddush. The chiddush is that both of them are gone. Yoyarev and Yedaya are history. Now we're already talking about um, three. Charim is in. Soirim, Malkia, Miyamin. Look at 17, top of the purple line. Chazir, interesting name. Kitzer. 
another Mishma is there. And nobody asked anybody for anything. Nobody said, give me the money. So this is a huge Kiddush. <laughs> where before we said that since Yoyarev didn't ask for anything, didn't ask for, for the money, so they take the carbon, give it to Yedaya. You do it in the wrong way. But now that even Yedaya didn't take care of business, so now we just wait for all the Mishmaris to go through. We come back around the cycle. We come back to Mishmar number one. And Yoyarev gets everything back. Kumash Malon, Mao the same Achuli Gabayad. The Kumash Malon, Amrino, Kivin, the Leitavi, since nobody sued anybody, the Hadri Veresha, it goes back to where it was. Brand new Sugi Raboisai. Shamevi, Xelia, Chaloy, Hevi, Ashamai. The way it works is, says the Mishnah, first you bring the money, then you bring the carbon. We're talking about Asham. Asham means Benny. What's Karen? Asham is Karen, the principal. What happens if you don't bring the Chaymish? You get a Kapara, you don't get a Kapara. You get a Kapara. How does everybody know this? The Rishkoil said yesterday that you didn't get a Kapara. It's, uh, it's not Ma'akiv, means that you don't, have, you, have to do, you don't have to do it in the right order, but you, you don't get a Kapara, you say. Came to, Somebody tell him that that's not the pshat over here. Look at the last, last Rashi. We'll see. How do we know that it goes in this order? The first, you bring the money to the Kayanim, then you bring a carbon. The word milvad is what gives it away here. Milvad means after. That... Milvad means that after this comes the Ela Kippurim. After whatever you did before, the money, then you bring this last line, Ela Kippurim, is when you bring the carbon. Guess what? There's another Pasuk in the Torah that talks, that says the word Milvad Elamata. Oh, I don't have to tell anybody these psukim. Everybody is very, very familiar. It says, by the carbon Pesach, Vikrat Misha Oila. What are you laughing? You like the last Pesach? Because <laughs> it has nothing to do with the sugya. Muvad Oilas Haboyke Hashem Oilas Tomi Tasuus Eile. Oh, that was good. <laughs> Wow. Huh? That could be like a status clip, no? We'll do we'll do uh, the new uh, We're gonna do it again, but better. So our boy say it says in the apostle, Mulvadri Las Haboikir Ashelo Oila Satomid. Tasu Isaila. Wow, wow, what a sheer, what a sheer. No way in the world do you see anything like this. Unbelievable. Wow, I'm so proud of the oil. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Says the Gemara like this. But let's be serious over here. We're talk- I just put the word Pesach so we know we're talking about a carbon Muslim of Pesach. The Pesach, they craft the Misha Oila, you bring the Oila for Pesach. And then it says that's in addition to Oila Sa Boiker Ashel Oila Sa Tomid. Every single morning you bring a Tomid, every, every day of the year, Tomid, Tomid, and every evening you bring a Tomid. It would come out that Milvad Oila Sa Tomid. Tamid comes at Milvad means after after what you just did the Pesach, then you bring the Tamid. We know that's wrong. Tamid always comes first and is always last. First in, last out. How do I know that nothing comes before the Tamid of the morning? Oil is always first. Omale, you're right. Anomashi, Chaper, Boy Nafkele, you, we thought we're learning from the word Milvad. No, I'm learning from the word Yechaper. Yechaper means in the future. First, something else took place, which is the giving of the money. Then, afterwards, this Yechaper boy threw the carbon. So the carbon is second. So Mela, I have no question from Koela. Because over there it says the word Milvad. Milvad can mean before, it can mean after. I don't know what it means. 
Depends on the on the situation. And there's still no kapara. A big balavera comes to the Rebbe and says, Rebbe, comes with like a slavas. <laughs> I did a big avera and I need a kapara from the Rebbe. And the Rebbe says, take this giant cup of lemon juice and drink it without any sugar. So the guy looks and he says, what? That's it? Just drink that? He says, no, I'm not saying you're going to get a kapara. But one thing's for sure. If you drink that, it's going to wipe your disgusting smile off your face. That's for sure. Madai <laughs> keeper. So it's very interesting. We just finished the sugyo talking about the keren, the choymesh, the carbon. There's something else that has the exact same thing, and that's me'ila. And in fact, we can learn one from the other because it's so similar in the oynish. So me'ila is if somebody takes something from the Beis Hamikdash, the Beis Hamikdash owns something. Let's say it owns a car, and you drive around in the car without permission. You're mile you took from the Beis HaMikdash, so now you have to return that, you have to return the principal, you have to add 25%, and you have to bring a carbon. Same exact thing as stealing from a ger. How do you know you need both? The two components, the money, you have to return, and you have to bring the carbon. Over here, the word asham is like by us, as the Gemara is going to explain. Asham is tricky. Usually, asham means a carbon. In this case, asham means the principal. How do I know this? Because in our sugi, we already established yesterday that the word asham doesn't mean a carbon. It must mean the money, the, the, the carrot. So over here also, Be'el asham v'nislachloi. And how do you know that you cannot bring the carbon first, like in our sugya. You have to bring the money first, then the carbon. Mm. That the money was already. I think that just like he has to bring a carbon, he has to bring the principal back. Otherwise, he doesn't have forgiveness. So too, the twenty-five percent is also ma'akev. Ma'akev what? The kapara says Rashi, the last word on the Amud in the Perek. Now that we know that they're so similar, they both need the money to come first and then the carbon. So let's learn one from the other and the other from the one. Hegdish Mehediyad will learn using doing Mi'ila to Hegdish from Gezel Ager and Gezel Ager Behediyad Mehegdish. Now what? Hegdish Mehediyad, what are we going to learn? Ma'ashem, the Hashem Keren. The word Ashem doesn't refer to carbon, it means money, the principle, Af Ashem, the Hacha, so too by Hegdish it means Keren. Behediyad Mehegdish, and what are we going to learn the opposite way? Mehegdish and Chaymish Ma'akev. Just like the Chaymish, the 25%, if you don't give it, you still have a Kapara. It's what you need to do. But if you didn't do it, it's not the end of the world. And so too, the Hegdish is not the, by, by, when, when you're mild and you don't bring the 25%, it's not Ma'akiv. Hajun Allah Chagoy Zalaitim. Hajun Allah Chagoy Zalaitim. Hajun Allah Chagoy Zalaitim. Daf Kuf Yud Aleph Omid Beis. Oh, I have a sponsor that I forgot to. Mm-hmm. Sorry. I got it late at night and I forgot to put it in. Sorry, let's see. Mm-hmm. Still on my status. What do I do? Chats. Okay. Yosef. The turning of the daf. Kidnovations LLC. Oive, we take out the LLC. In honor of my uncle Rebel Khan Pressman and as a for Akiva Simcha Ben Fega. Oh, very nice. I didn't see this. Thank you. Mamish appreciate it. Okay, you can leave the LLC in. Hagoizumachu. <laughs> 
It's unbelievable. I mean, we're towards the end of Masechta. We only have, what, nine days left? 110 days into the Masechta. 110 days ago, some of us was zoicha to be in Connecticut. I, I don't want to rub it in. It brings back memories, does. It brings back tremendous memories. What, that means you're not coming this, uh, this coming time? No. Oh, but you can go on all your little trips to, to Poland, this and that. Uh, I mean, you just got back. Literally, you just got back two days ago. You're telling me about Eretz Yisrael. You were... <laughs> He's in Dubai. Uh, but not at a Shabbaton of Chizuk, of, of, of people crying. There was not a single dry eye. People were crying the whole Shabbos and besimcha the whole Shabbos. It was unbelievable. No, did you cry? No, seriously. You don't remember. Did you cry, Benny? <laughs> what? <laughs> I cried. Yeah. <laughs> I go to my, I cry stop. Like, when I can't find the tissue, I'm crying. <laughs> I go to Machas Bonov. The boy said, we have a beautiful picture. I, I love this. It's not easy to make these. Mom, it's not easy. Guy stole one of these trucks. It has a hechshah of dots. Don't worry about it. <laughs> and uh, he's feeding his little kids. They all have Ganovim shirts on. <laughs> it's the new stripe. <laughs> they wear the stripes and shavs. I'm just thinking to myself now. Okay. Hagoyz Lomach is Bonov. If a person fed his children mm-hmm. and then he dies, they don't have to pay. They ate it already. Or, Viniach Lefneim. Or, his mom is a big tzaddik. He gave them a gishmak and gneva. He stole something before he died so they have something to live on. Pturim shalim. They don't have to pay. The Ben Eshchai says, he says it's a Maise Shehoya. He has a whole book of stories, but he says a Maise Shehoya, which has a, a, a nice Musar Haskell to it at the end. He says there was a person that they caught stealing. You know, one of these Arab countries. They caught him stealing. They said, okay, death penalty. So right before they put him to death, the king asked him, do you have something you want? Any last wish? She says, yeah, I want to talk to my mother privately. Like, in front, not privately, I want to tell her something. So they bring the mother in front of everybody. He goes over to her, whispers something in her ear. And as he's whispering something in her ear, he bites her ear off in front of everybody. The king was, you're so disturbed. How does a son bite off a mother's ear? He says, you really do deserve to die. But what did you just do? He says, look, when I was a kid, my mother used to steal all the time in front of me. She used to take me places. What do you want, Dad? Okay, and she would steal. She would pick. When I grew up, I wanted things. I would, uh, my mother said, go steal. And I steal. She was very proud of me. So in fact, she's the one that brought me to this position. She, she's responsible. I told her that. So the king says, I hear. And he decided instead of killing him, he's going to kill the mother. Let him go. Says the Ben Ishchai, that many times we as parents... We're makel in certain things. Everybody knows in certain areas, some with echsherim, some with Shabbos, some with whatever. You do in front of your kid, you drive to Shul a minute before Shkia, whatever it is, yeah? You makel. And then the kid takes it one more mm. step. He takes it and it says, Ben Ishchai, on that, a parent is going to give a Why were you makel in front of your kids? They learned from you, they saw it, it became better to them. And that's a. Uh, so there, goizel umachel. He steals, gives it to his kids. They see it. There's a, a a Jew and his non-Jewish friend. They walk into a takeout place before Shabbos. So the non-Jew tells his Jewish friend, "Let me show you how it's done." He looks at the uh, the store owner. He sees that the the guy has turned his head for a little bit. He grabs a piece of gefilte fish and puts it in his pocket. Uh, a minute later, the guy looks the other way, takes a piece of gala, the other packet. He just says, no, 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 that's not how you do it. Let me show you. He walks over to the, to the guy, in front of the guy's face, he takes a piece of gefilte fish and eats it. So the guy says, what are you doing? You didn't pay for it. He says, uh, this is magic. Wait. Takes a piece of gala, puts it in his mouth, and he eats it. So the guy, what? He says, you think that I ate it. Let me show you. It's in that guy's pocket right over there. <laughs> <laughs> now, achrayus throughout chas means something that nadlan, real estate, something that you could go back and there's a lien on it, real estate. 
Chayom and Shal, but we're going to see in the Gemara a different Pshat. Machloig is what it means. Omer Rav Chizda, says Rav Chizda, just, I thought it was, it's interesting that it mentions Rav Chizda here on the same Omud as two other people, and I'll point it out soon. Goza Avalon is Yahshua Bailim, Ubor Acher, Bacholim Imenu. Says Rav Chizda, we know the famous concept of Yush. Yush is a person gives up. When something is stolen from him, he realizes it's stolen, and at that point he says, Oy, I'm never going to get it back. So, if a person, something was stolen, and he didn't give it up, somebody took it from the Ganev and ate it. I'll give you a perfect example that Tomer told us last night it happened to him. I was just saying over this example. He said, but did he have a Uvda in China? A guy walks over to somebody and says, you know, oh, you look very familiar. The guy says, not really. He says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to remind you. Let's, let's go to this, you see this beautiful restaurant? Let's go to this restaurant on me and I'm going to remind you. So they sit there in the restaurant. He says, what should I, anything you want, it's on me. So you sit, they order a beautiful meal and he's telling him, you don't remember. No, I don't remember. That, that, that. The meal is over basically. And the guy that invited him into the restaurant books. He runs out the door and he's out of there. Comes the waiter and tells the guy, listen, you just ate a whole meal. He says, no, but that guy, no. You ate in my restaurant, you're going to pay. That's what it says over here. You ate here, I, he stole it, and I didn't know. I didn't know he's playing a game on me. Doesn't matter. You, the owner of the restaurant was not Mitziaj. He, he still thinks he's getting paid. And you, you ate something stolen, pay for it. Rotsam is Zegoyev, Rotsam is Zegoyev. You could take from either person. The Ganav or the person that, that enjoyed it. My timer. As long as there's no Yush, it remains in the ownership of the owner. And if somebody, even though he didn't do it on purpose, he, he had no clue, went over there and ate it, took it, he's Chayiv. What do you do with our Mishnah? That's the story that happened with us. A guy steals, gives it to his kids. Why are they potter to pay? So what's the obvious answer, boy? Say, there was Yish. Tiyuf to the Rav Chizda. Oh, the Rav Chizda. I mean, the Gemara makes a whole thing out of it, as if it wasn't so posh. That our Mish is talking about there was Yish. He gave up, and since he gave up, the kids don't have to pay for it. And if he put it down there in front of them, they didn't, it seems like they didn't need it, they don't have to pay. There's another concept in Shaz, a famous one called Shina Rishus. Now, over here, we're talking about the Uziyush. Right? We established that, well, according to the Rishus, at least, the, the guy gave up. And there's a Shina Rishus, it transferred domains. How did it transfer domains? Says Rabbi Bar Chama, it must have happened through the inheritance. The act of inheritance. The, act, the, the condition of inheritance. Because somebody dies and gives it over to his kids, then it transferred possession, transferred domains from the Ganev to his children. That's a Shinu Rishos. Together with Yush, we have a very powerful combination. Two things. Shinu Rishos and Yush, boom, creates a new owner. That's why, even though it's right in front of them, they don't have to give it back. Rav Amar, I just thought it's very interesting. Rami Bar Chama and Rava are both son-in-laws by Rav Chizda. That's the famous Gemara that Rav Chizda's daughter was very young and she said, Baruch HaKadah, she said, I'm going to marry both of these people and Rava said, and I want to be the second one. And Rav Chizda is right where it says Gemara, Amar Rav Chizda, and over here we have Machlaikas between Rami Bachama, the two son in laws. Rava Amar. Rishus Yorish, Lafk Rishus Likerdom. Not true, I argue. I argue on Rami Bachama, that's how it stays at the end of the Sugya. It's not true. Just because you got to be Rusha doesn't make it a Shinoi Rishus. Vahacha Bemayaskina. Kisha Cholom. So says Rava, we must say that in our Mishnah, the Hiniach Lefneim is talking about that they consumed it. It's not in this world anymore. As the Gemara of Amikdani save him, if it's something. So now the Gemara understands Achrai is very differently than we, we understood it. 
Achrayis means something that's recognizable. I'll give you an example. Uh, one of my wife's relatives, she's no longer alive, right before she was nifter, like re- she, she was losing it completely. And uh, we, we are partners in a hotel in Chicago. And she gifted my wife, after Shabbos, she gifted my wife a box. And my wife opens the box. My wife started laughing hysterically. She took towels from the bathroom that had the name of the hotel on it. She put it in a box and gave it to my wife. Not, not realizing what she was doing, Michal, like she was losing it, but it was nicker. And when it's nicker, like this, there's an Indian to give it back that the, the parent shouldn't have a bazillion. It says, holiday in on the towel, whatever it is. You know, MDY here, the MDY towel. So let's see. A guy is in the Kaisal. Uh, the father is Mamash Big Tzadik. He's diving by the Kaisal and says, uh, here, uh, you know, with this towel, you got you to gotta do something. You got to do truba for the father, just for the bazillion of his neshama. Huh? The merch. No, there's only one of those. Only one in the world. Now, uh, I have the talus bag with that, not the talus. Baruch Hashem, nobody bought me that yet. I have to wear it with a big one on the back, like this, like, like the sweatshirt. But it says in the safe in the Mishnah, if it's recognizable, then the children have to give it back. We're talking about that's in front of us. That's the case. Just one is in front of us and we don't recognize it. One is a case that it's in front of us and we do recognize it. No, it's not what you think. It's not talking about a talus that has a name on it. We're talking about real estate. If the father left over real estate, not a card that everybody knows, oh, that interesting color car is Pliny's. And look, somebody else stole it and is driving it. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about he left over a building. Then, since he left over real estate, you have to take from the real estate. It's as if the, guy, the, the one that was robbed, he has a piece of that real estate. There's a, there's a, there's a lien on the property. So pay it back. Says Gemara, Rebbe taught his own son. It's not talking about real estate. Your car, or the tractor that you plow with. A donkey, a cow. Why? Because everybody knows. Everybody recognizes that donkey. Everybody recognizes. It. Yeah, if you're in a in a place with donkey, every donkey has a little nuance. The ear looks like that. It's bigger. It's smaller. Everybody knows. That's Pliny's donkey. Mipnei kvaydavim says Rabbi to his son to give cover to the to the dead. Elo my Rava kishachivna. Very interesting gemara. Says Rava when I will die. Says Rava about himself. Rebbe Yishai nafik levosi. Rabbi Shai Yishinoh is going to come out towards me and greet me in Oil Ma'amas. Why? The Taritz no Masnisin Kavosei. Says Toysus Dibura Maskil Dim Taritzina Masnisin Kavosei. Says Toysus that it didn't happen once. This chos of somebody coming and greeting you is not because you once answered somebody in this world. He did it. Rava many times stuck up for Rabbi Shai. Huh? Stuck, stuck, stuck. <laughs> How do you spell stuck? <laughs> stuck up, you should go up. <laughs> I do appreciate Bemis. You should correct me. I'm not saying it's going to help. I'm not saying I'm not going to say the same thing. Uh, but when I did say Epic Center once, I, that was a, a joke, but my daughter gave it to me and I never said it again. Huh? How many? Uh, there's a million things. But now with Baruch Hashem, I get it in the morning and I give it in the evening. Next year, Baruch Hashem, I'll get it in the Yiddish one. There was a, there's a famous story with the Megini Shleimo. He he, his house was on fire. And you know the story? Yeah, yeah, but that, I'm, saying, I'm starting from the point that he was about to die in a fire and he, he accepted upon himself that he, if he's saved, he'll stick up for Rashi. He'll write a whole thing about how Rashi's right when Taisus asks all these questions. And as he was being nifter, the Chacham and people came to, to, to part, part with him and he said, Rashi's here. Rashi he said something about Rashi. He came to greet him. The same thing with the Magid, the famous Magid in the Bish Yosef. Uh, the Malach uh, told him, he said that he, he should know. Right before he was nifted, he said, the Rambam is very happy with you because you stuck up for the Rambam. You always used to be Yorid the Sevdaito. He said, you understood him correctly. And now you just had two him. You should know the Rambam is going to uh, 
to greet you. There's a famous joke that every Israeli knows. I'll say it anyways because there's a lot of truth to it, unfortunately. But it's a joke nevertheless. There's a, a yeshiva guy, a Litvish yeshiva guy. He said a whole pilpul in the Rambam. And the Rambam came to him in the dream and said, what, the whole pilpul is shtus ma'avalim. So he told the Rambam, he says, what do you know? You never learned in a Litvish yeshiva. Okay. Says Gemar. <coughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. You got a, you got a, a correct. We had a Svarty in the shear. He screamed out. He says, that's not the way you say the joke. And he screamed it out. That's the way I say it. Anyway. <clears throat> so, says Rava, I'm sticking over Mishaya. Mishaya, Novak, we will see. The Taritza Maslisika say, I can answer the Mishnah like him. The Tony of Mishaya, Hagoizel Omachel is Bonov. If a person steals for his sons and they consume it, if he put it in front of them, then we have to explain the Mishnah. There's a, a couple of words missing, but basically the point is that if he put it in front of them and the gzela is there, our Mishnah says if it's in front of them, they're potter. But I'm explaining because it's talking about that the gzela is there. And I hold that Rishus Yoresh Lavke Rishus Lekeach. That what? That just by the father dying, there's no Shini Rishus. And if there's no Shini Rishus, then who owns it? The one that was robbed. But if it was consumed, they're potter. But if the father, and I'm going to learn Pshat, means real estate. They have to pay. So I just want to show you real quickly to make a little bit of a, not to be confused. We're going to go line by line. If it's before Yish, before Yish, the guy never gave up, and it's over here, you must return it. It doesn't matter, third party, fourth, he never gave up. And it's a, but if it was consumed before Yish, According to Rav Chizda, you have to return it. After Yush. After Yush, and it's in front of us, you have to return it. Because there's no Shinu Rishos. It's just Yush alone. If he consumed it, then it's green. Then you don't have to give it back. And finally, if you have two, a combination, a powerful combination of both Yush, giving up, and Shinu Rishos. I didn't have room to put the Rishos in there, sorry. And I didn't have Yoshi to squeeze it together. Afilu be'ein potter. In other words, even if it's right in front of us, you hear what's going on here? Hold on, before you go, we're not done yet. This this item is in front. Of the, the 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 guy's car is right here, but he gave up, and there's a shinu rishos. The question is, is dying a shinu rishos? That's a machlekes rav and rafchiz and rav and barchama. If the actual death, the inheritance created, but regardless, if there was a shinu rishos, then it becomes. Next little piece over here, Omar. We're just getting to the end of the Omar. Omar, mm-hmm. if it doesn't exist, then you don't have to give it back. Name it to the Rav Chizda. Rav Chizda says that in the case of the restaurant, there's no Yush. You could go after the guy, the unassuming, the guy that didn't know, right? In the restaurant, you go after both of them. The Rav Chizda, the obvious answer is, but when there is Yush, he, the restaurant owner doesn't go after him. If it's right in front of us, you have to give it back. Rabbi Bachama says that Yerusha is a Shinu Rishos. And over here it says you have to give it back. Yes, dying is a Shinu Rishos, but you need a Shinu Rishos together with a Yish. And there's no Yish. Rabbi Sai, have a wonderful day. Shilam Aloy, Sisoy Dialo, remind you of Israel.